Hello students, today we are going to see topic 5 which is matter and materials. Under matter and materials we are going to see organic chemistry. Let us see what is organic chemistry. So organic chemistry is the study of carbon based compounds. I am repeating, it is a study of carbon based compound. Now, what is carbon? We know that carbon is an element in our periodic table and carbon is the basic building block of all organic compounds. So carbon is the basic building block of all organic compounds. Where can we find the organic compounds, the carbon based organic compounds? First of all, every area in our life we see carbon based organic compounds. Example, in milk, in wood, in wool, in sunscreen lotions, the paraffin which we used in stoves, the petrol we used in cars, etc. So, now we can see that organic chemistry or organic molecules plays a very important role in our everyday life. So, we see that carbon is the basic building block of all organic compounds. Now, there is a question, why do we use carbon in organic compounds? Because of the unique features of carbon. Let us see the unique properties or the features of carbon. Okay, first of all, carbon is in group 4. We know that carbon belongs to group 4 of the periodic table. Now, the atomic number of carbon is 6. Therefore, we can write the electron configuration of carbon as 2, 4. Simply the electron configuration of carbon. The electronic electron configuration. Now, if we know that carbon's electron configuration is 2, 4, we know that this is the core electron and this is the valence electron. The valence electron. So carbon. So next we can say the unique property of carbon is it is carbon have four valence electrons. So valence electron means they are unbonded electrons. So, have, so we have four unbonded electrons in carbon atom. So this four unbonded electrons makes carbon to bond with another four other elements therefore the bond becomes very strong and we know that what kind of bond carbon makes with carbon always share electrons therefore the the chemical bond which carbon forms is called a covalent bond because they share electrons now let's look at the half puff um, diagram of this uh, carbon atom so, if you look at the half bar diagram of carbon atom, we know that the first orbital is 1s orbital, that is this one, which is 2, can occupy 2 electrons. The second one is 2s, 2s can take, again the maximum s orbital can take is again 2. Now we have the we are left with another two so it's one two three four we are left with two more that is our 2p orbital and we know the 2p orbital which is we can divide it again as 2px 2py and 2pz and now we have two more so it's one then we go to the second one look at our 2s orbital 2s orbital we have four electrons to fill so we fill two in our s orbital that's a maximum it can take and then we go to the p orbitals which we divide it into p 2px 2py and 2pz and we are left with two more because it's one two three four we are left with two more to make it total six so we fill in 2px1 and 2py another one okay now what will happen if the atoms start sharing electrons what will happen is orbital hybridization will happen. 
orbital hybridization. Or simply we can call it hybridization. Okay, now let us see what is orbital hybridization. Orbital hybridization is the mixing of atomic orbitals. Did you hear? It's a mixing of atomic orbitals. Mixing of atomic orbitals. When atomic orbitals mix, we will have a new hybrid orbitals and the new hybrid orbital will have different energy levels, will have different shapes etc. than the original component atomic orbitals. Right? Therefore, it will be able to make chemical bonds according to the valence bond theory. Let us see what happened uh, during hybridization. We know that hybridization is the mixing of atomic orbitals. So, if you look at 2s orbital and 2p orbitals, they are very close to each other. So, what will happen is the 2s and the 2p will combine together. So, it is 2sp orbital now. Now, what will happen? Now, remember we have four electrons in the second orbital. So, this four electrons will occupy in this manner. Now, we can see that each orbital, each orbital here can take 1, 1, 1, 1. So, therefore, we can conclude that carbon can make or bond with another four atoms. Therefore, this is, the, this is why carbonists have the ability to bond with another elements and then it can make multiple bonds. The ability of carbon to make multiple bonds to form chain structures or ring structure of organic compounds is called catenation. The ability of carbon atom to bond with another four atoms to make chain or ring structures and we call the process is called as catenation. Carbon atom has the ability to make multiple bond with itself. Okay, itself means it's between carbons. No? Now, which are the multiple bonds? We can classify those multiple bonds as single bond, double bond, and triple bond. These are the multiple bonds carbon can make with another carbon atom. Now, let us see the structure of organic molecules. Okay, now let's look at hydrocarbons. It's one of the important terms we need to know when we do organic chemistry. Hydrocarbons are compounds consist of hydrogen and carbon. Once again, hydrocarbons are compounds, organic compounds, which consist of hydrogen and carbon atom only. Now, organic compounds, we can classify organic compounds into two. Or organic molecules are classified into two. Organic molecules are classified into two aliphatic or cyclic, or we call it open chain compounds, and the second one is cyclic or closed chain compounds, which we call it ring compounds. Now let's look at the open chain compounds. Open chain compounds are classified again. Now we can Classify them as saturated, saturated organic compounds and unsaturated organic compounds. Saturated organic compounds are called alkanes. Why do we call them alkanes? Because they form single bond. 
means they share one pair of electrons between carbon atom. Now, if you look at the second one, that is the unsaturated hydrocarbon, we have unsaturated hydrocarbons are alkenes and alkynes. Unsaturated hydrocarbons are alkenes and alkynes. Now, alkenes are double bond compounds and alkynes are triple bonded compounds. So, double bond and triple bond. So, once again, the chain compounds are classified into saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons. Saturated hydrocarbons are called alkenes and they are single bond and unsaturated hydrocarbons are called alkenes and alkynes and alkenes are double bonded compound it means they they share two pair of electrons between carbon atom and alkynes are triple bond compounds it means uh, they they share three pair of electrons between carbon atom so that's about the basic structure of organic molecules let us see what is homologous series it is a series of compounds with the same functional group i repeat it's a series of compounds with the same functional group and is described by a same chemical formula what is a functional group these are the technical terms we need to know while we are doing organic chemistry Functional group, it's an atom or a group of atoms. It's a atom or a group of atom determines the physical and the chemical properties of an organic compound. So a functional group which determines the physical and the chemical properties of organic compounds. A functional group determines the physical it's a group of atoms or an atom which determines the physical and chemical properties of an organic compound let's see the general formulas of organic compounds basically we are going to see the general formula of hydrocarbons and remember we know what is a hydrocarbon a hydrocarbon is an organic compound which is made up of carbon atom and hydrogen atom let's see the first one and we we did previously that what is a a, a hydrocarbons are classified into three they are alkenes alkenes and alkynes so let's see the chemical formula of alkenes now, when you talk about alkanes, the chemical formula, this is the general formula of alkane, which is CnH2n plus 2. Once again, alkanes, the general formula is CnH2n plus 2. So, depending on the number of carbon atom, if carbon is 1, then we can write it as c one h 2 times 1 plus 2, which is C1, that is C, H2 plus 2 is 4, CH4, which we call it as methane, the, the name of the organic compound is methane, we will see how to name it later on. So, that's our first one, which is the first hydrocarbon, we call it alkanes, the second hydrocarbon is alkenes alkenes the general formula is cnh2n cnh2n so if now one thing we need to be very careful is remember we said a carbon atom can make bond with another carbon atom now we when we start with alkenes we don't start with one carbon atom we start with two carbon atom we will see why it's two not one in our uh, next class so let's we we start with two so it becomes example it's c2 h 2 times 2 which is c2 h4 which we call it ethene 
Let us look at our third hydrocarbon which is alkynes. The general formula of alkyne is CnH2n minus 2. Once again, the general formula is CnH2n minus 2. Here also the carbon starts with two atoms, two carbon atoms. So we will see it later. But let's give an example for this. The example is C2 H 2 times 2 minus 2 which gives you C2 H4 minus 2 which is C2 H2 and the name of this organic compound is ethyne. 